Good evening, Church. It's such a pleasure that all of us could uh, join here, come together, and worship the Lord together, and share one life in Christ Jesus. I guess we don't have Sunday school uh, this week, so um, we can directly go into the Word of God today. Last week we have studied and we discussed about Jesus, one of I am statements of Jesus Christ in which he said, I am the true vine and you are the branches. And he, and he also uh, said that his father, Jesus' father, God himself, is the wine dresser. And how is he going to deal with the wines also was explained by Jesus Christ. If any branch that is not bearing fruit, he is not going to throw them in the fire. But first thing he is going to do is he is going to lift them up so that they may bear fruit and if any branch that is already bearing fruit what is going to do he is going to purge them means he is going to clean the leaves so that the photosynthesis can happen and the, uh, these branches can bear more fruit and then he said that he is the true wine and he commanded us to abide in the wine when we abide in the true wine we will bear much fruit bearing fruit more fruit and much fruit. This is the desire of God and this is the goal of Jesus Christ and God in our lives that he wants us to bear much fruit. And he is going to work and do everything that is required to make us to bear much fruit. And we also have studied that this fruit is not the fruit of individuals. This fruit is not just about some kind of spiritual disciplines. This fruit is not about acquiring great biblical knowledge or theological knowledge. This fruit is not about giving sermons standing here uh, uh, at the pulpit. This fruit is not about, you know, how religious we are. But this fruit is all about the community fruit that is love. How are we going to love our brothers and sisters in the church? So, through which we understand that we cannot bear this fruit by ourselves, though we abide in Jesus. Or, let me tell you, uh, what it says is, abiding in Jesus is abiding with our brethren. When we abide with our brethren, then only together we will be able to bring forth the fruit. And I and my Jesus cannot bring any fruit. That's what we need to understand from what Jesus said. I, my brother, and with Jesus, we are going to bring much fruit. So, what, what am I going to do is, today I'm going to bring a small example of what Jesus promised. That he is going to lift the fruit, branch that does not bear fruit, and so that it may bear fruit, and he is going to purge the fruit branch that is going to, uh, so that's already bearing fruit, so that it may bear more fruit, and he, uh, ultimately to me, <coughs> to make us bear much fruit. So one of the examples we can find in the Bible is the life of Peter. Life of Peter is a great example because life of Peter lies in three categories. He was in a place where there was no fruit. He was in a place where there was more fruit. He was in a place where he brought forth much fruit. So we are going to look into the life of Peter. The scripture we have read, it is uh, more usually it is called as the restoration of Peter. The restoration of Peter is such a refreshing scripture for all of us. And I don't know about you, but I have, I feel, I have so many resemblance. I have so much in common with Peter. Peter is a very com common person. He is not, uh, you know, like Paul. Paul is a character we find in the Bible who was very strong. And mostly the, <clears throat> the mistakes of Paul are not uh, explained in the Bible. I, I, that does not mean he doesn't have any mistakes. But basically, uh, he is like a, a good, perfect character kind of picture we get in the Bible. But on the other hand, Peter is someone who was stumbling, who was falling and standing and walking with the Lord. That is the kind of picture we get about Peter. We all know the story of Peter very well. So I'm not going to speak about his entire his story. But we know the kind of character he is. So, Jesus restoring Peter is such a refreshing and assuring 
scripture to all of us and at least to me because i also someone who always stumble and fall i seek for the restoration of the lord in my life <coughs> Among all the promises, among all the great statements uh, Peter said, and he said one statement, and which we Christians are singing always, that is, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world is before me, uh, sorry, the world is behind me, the cross is before me, no turning back, no turning back. No matter what comes, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. What do you feel when you hear that song? What comes to your mind? Does it come to a great commitment to follow Jesus no matter what comes in front of us? Great, that is also there. For me, to sing that song is so scary. To say, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, because I always know the next day itself I am going to break it. I could never completely, properly follow Jesus in my life ever. I tried. You know, so this message is for those who want to love Jesus, but failing. This is for those who want to follow Jesus, but are failing. This is not for those who have decided to follow Jesus and no turning back, no turning back. The world is behind me, the cross is before me, no turning back, no turning back. I guess we will be able to answer this question only when somebody puts a gun at your head, at our head. Whether we would say, no turning back, no turning back. Do we really need such a big cases? Maybe, let's see. And we know the story of Jesus, uh, sorry, sorry, a story of Peter. Peter is someone who promised to Jesus, saying that, I have decided to follow you and I will not turn. I mean, Matthew chapter 26, we find, Matthew 26, 31 onwards. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Oh, Jesus, you really don't know me. <laughs> you know, all these people, you know, you, you, whatever you said may be true about all these people. You really don't know me. And he said, Peter answered and said to him, Even if I all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. In other words, he's saying, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. Then Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this night before the rooster crow, you will deny me three times. Then Peter said, oh, Jesus, you really don't know me. Please, please don't joke. You know? right? Once we have decided, no turning back, no turning back. That's what Peter is saying. And he said, Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And, uh, and then Jesus said to, said to him, verse 31, then the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. I, I imagine like this. Peter was saying, Jesus, you don't know me. I have decided, no turning back. I'll come even to death. I'll follow you even to hell. That's what he is saying. And Jesus said, Simon, Simon. And Simon is busy talking to people. Simon, Simon. That's what happening. Peter was so very confident in himself. He was engrossed in his confidence. And he was not able to hear the word of Jesus himself. That is the reason Jesus has to speak not once, twice. When Jesus said, call, Jesus called him twice means he is not listening to him. Otherwise, by one time he called his name, he would have answered. But he had to call him twice. That means... He was not listening to him. So he's called, Simon, Simon, you are not understanding the gravity of the situation. You are not understanding how deeply you are going to be tested. And in fact, Satan asked me 
for permission so that I may that he may sift you like a wheat, like taking the wheat and beating against a stone so that the wheat grains can fall. And what Simon is saying, oh, sorry, Jesus still said, so Satan asked me for the permission, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So here clearly we can see the test is going to be for his very faith itself. And Jesus said, I prayed for you so that your faith may not fail. And when you have written to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, this is what Peter is saying, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Again he is saying, Lord, you really don't know my commitment. You really don't know how strong uh, I am. I have decided to follow you. I will go even to prison. I will go even to death. I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. We can see Peter was come. I am not saying Peter is not committed to his, uh, his master. He is. He is committed to his master. And the problem is he is self-confident. When Jesus said, Satan asked me to sift you like a wheat, if I was there, I would have asked him, Jesus, please, please don't let me go through this temptation. And in fact, in fact, in the Lord's Prayer, one of the prayers we make, what is that? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> Just few days ago only, Jesus taught this prayer to the Disciples, to humble themselves, Jesus himself humbled himself before the Father. And uh, he prayed this prayer and taught the prayer to the disciples. And it, Jesus, he, uh, he uh, what we will call, practically he did that. You remember, um, while Jesus was praying in Gethsemane, he prayed to the Father, Father, if it is your will, please take away this cup from me, but yet not my will, but thy will be done. Here also he is asking, please hold me through this temptation. Keep me strong. If it is possible, don't lay, take me through this temptation. Here. Temptation. That's what the prayer of Jesus, where we can see humility. But here Peter was self-confident. And in fact, Peter ridiculed the scripture. Jesus said, he quoted from Isaiah and said, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will run away. Jesus said, Peter is saying, ah, you may be quoting scriptures from the old book. Now, children, many of us, we say, no, ah, just don't quote me from the Bible. These are old principles. Okay? And you don't know what is, what I am, what is in this world. That's what we hear, we get to hear from our children and many others, right? Now, nothing works out from the old book. So, here Peter is also saying, See, don't quote me anything from the old book. I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. He ridiculed the scripture. He ridiculed Jesus. And he, he challenged Jesus speaking about his own commitment. Through all this, what we can understand about Peter? Very simple. Peter was, Peter was stubborn. That's all. He has love for the Lord, great love for the Lord, but he was self-confident and he was stubborn, not even ready to listen to the voice of the Lord. But what happened, we all know very well, so we'll go through it fast. Luke 22, in the same chapter, we can find uh, verse 59 onwards. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter said, man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. So three times Peter denied Jesus. Once he was going and standing at a fire and, uh, you know, keeping himself warm as Jesus was arrested. And it, there was a small girl who recognizes him saying, you are one of his disciples. So he was scared. What did he say? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Now he is getting scared of a small little girl. He said to Jesus, you don't know. 
then this little girl must be saying, Peter, you don't know. And then he, he was trying to follow and come to Anna's high priest's house. He could not go inside. And again, somebody recognized and said, you are one among his disciples. He said, no, I am not. Then what did Peter say? Lord, I am going to be with you. I will go with you even to prison. Now here he is not going to high priest's house. He said he will not go to prison. He will go to prison also, but he could not go to high priest's house. And at last, you can see the kind of attitude Peter has. Again, somebody recognized and said, surely, surely you are one of his disciples. With confidence, they said. And Peter was, in fact, uh, in Telugu Bible and some other Bibles, if you read, it is written, he cursed them and said, I don't know him. Peter cursed them and said, I don't know him. He is someone who said, I will go even to death for you, Jesus. I have decided to follow you. And no turning back, no turning back. Three times he failed. Can you imagine the third time? The Luke, the, the very reason I have taken this scripture is because Luke explains in such a dramatic manner, just like in Telugu films, uh, Telugu or Indian films, like, you know, Peter denied for the third time. Immediately, same time, Jesus was passing by. And the rooster crows. And Jesus looked, uh, looks at Peter. Imagine how would you feel if you are in the Peter's place. You said that you will do something. But you failed bitterly. You failed utterly. And then Peter looked at Jesus. Looked into your eyes. And then cried bitterly. That is the situation. Peter very badly. He failed. He said he will go to prison and to death. He was not able to go there. Don't need to do such big things. He just failed to recognize, he is, tell he is one of the disciples. You know, many a times we talk so much about being a witness for Christ. We hear the stories of martyrs who went and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ and who gave their lives for Jesus. There are people who gave their entire wealth for Jesus. There are people who went till the last breath of their life for Jesus. They lost everything for Jesus. They lost their families. They suffered a lot. They ridiculed. We heard so much about these people. These people said, I have decided to follow Jesus. And to an extent, they tried to do that. And sometimes we, we don't need to do such big things to say that we have decided to follow Jesus. Sometimes carrying our own Bible will become very shameful for us, right? I'm carrying an iPad, of course. Sometimes carrying Bible is becoming difficult for us. Uh, people may recognize I'm a Christian. We don't want to say that we are Christians. We don't want to take the name of Jesus in front of people. I'm not telling you go and speak all religious stuff. Oh, Jesus does this. Jesus do, you know, he will do this, that and all. Just to say that I'm a Christian is becoming difficult for us. To say that we go to a particular church is becoming difficult for us. To, as children, many may I still remember there are times in my life also I had been through, and I guess you also might have been through that. So, Sundays to tell my friend that I have to go to church is something difficult for me. <laughs> you know, to tell to our peers, our friends, to say that we are going to church, I cannot come to play cricket. So that is also difficult for us. So. Peter, he said, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back and no turning back. And he failed utterly. And what about us? Have we ever tried to follow Jesus? If we compare with this kind of story, have we ever tried? Have we ever at least made that prayer? I believe all of us might have made that prayer. I still remember times. Jesus, if you help me to pass in this exam, I'm going to come to church for at least for 10 weeks. <laughs> First week I go, very religiously nice. Second week I go, good. Third week is a little boring. <laughs> and fourth week onwards, no one knows. <laughs> After some time, I even forget the promise I made. I have decided to attend the service. No turning back, no turning back. So I never turn back to the church. So... <laughs> 
so such such hard our cases if B, peter uh, peter failed utterly we failed even <laughs> utterly we failed and peter cried very bitterly he failed greatly and here comes the the ministry of the wine dresser and here comes the branch peter it could not bear any fruit it could not he could not follow jesus he could not even do a small thing for jesus though he was with him for three and a half years he failed utterly it could not bear any single fruit and here comes the wine dresser he is not cutting it off saying you have denied me so i'm going to deny you before my father so you are no more part of my flock cut and put it in fire did jesus do that no no this wine dresser is someone who is going to lift up the branch that does not bear fruit so what did he do he rose again from the dead the first thing after raising again from the dead you know who is the first person saw jesus can you help me mary magdalene it was not uh, john or peter or anyone so nobody saw but mary magdalene she saw jesus and jesus had a conversation with this lady and here you can see that is in matthew chapter 16 verse 6 but he said to, sorry but he said to them do not be alarmed you seek jesus of nazareth this is the conversation <coughs> mary was having the way the angel was talking it for it was in fact g it was jesus you seek jesus of nazareth who was crucified he is risen he is not here see the place where they laid him but go tell his disciples and peter that he is going before you into galilee there you will see him as he said to you what did jesus say he said to mary magdalene you please go tell his disciples that jesus is not dead anymore he rose again from the dead jesus was killed and when he was arrested all you people ran away from him and you did not help him but you go tell uh, you you please tell them that he rose again from the dead he is not dead anymore and when you go and talk to the disciples don't forget please don't ever don't forget especially tell peter that the lord has risen and he is going to wait for you in galilee to meet you peter failed utterly and imagine mary magdalene goes to the room and all the disciples are there and he said guys he is risen he is risen he is not dead anymore he rose again from the dead i went to the tomb the tomb was empty he is risen from the dead and he told me to inform all of you to inform all of you that he is rose again from the dead but where 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 is peter where is peter i have a special message for him and he and she tells peter peter you know what he rose again from the dead and he specially took your name and asked me to inform you that and that he will meet you at galilee what would happen to peter put yourself in the place of peter he said that he has decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back and he utterly failed he could not even follow jesus in front of a small girl he failed utterly and he cried bitterly and jesus said specially nin nadugutunnadu ani cheppindi so mary magdalene kese came and said he asked for all disciples and especially for you peter his heart might have been melted that moment completely if he cried bitterly after denying he might have cried even bitterly out of happiness <laughs> i don't know the terminology i i would like to ask you to try to relate to the situation if he cried for an hour before he might have cried forever i denied him these many times but he specially asked for me and jesus restored the relationship he had with the peter he lifted him up with that after comes the interesting 
picture scripture that we read this is uh, john's last explanation of jesus resurrection narratives and john 21 we can see uh, the restoration of peter first he restored the relationship that peter has with the with jesus and in john 21 he restores peter position again in matthew 22 jesus said when you return you lead the brethren you strengthen your brethren so he had given a leadership role to peter and i believe if this math john 21 event did not happen i feel many of his disciples you know might have rejected him to be the leader you know? but the good news is this the gifts of the lord and the calling of the lord are irrevocable many a times we fail in our lives my brethren we may fail jesus but jesus is not going to fail us at any moment once he called us he called us he who called us is faithful we may fail but he is going to remain faithful and uh, as a challenge i would like to bring to the church many a times there may be some leaders or there may be some people who might have failed in their life and we judge them as if he is not fit for ministry anymore he is not fit to lead anymore he is not fit to be part of the family anymore he is not fit to be my husband he is not fit to be a family member or my father or my team lead or whatever or my pastor or musician or he is not fit to be worship leader we judge them and kick them off especially we in the church we have become so so very judgmental I'm talking about the universal church. And we don't accept them. I remember a few stories. I know one well-known, <coughs> well-known uh, uh, Christian musician. I can tell you the name after the service, if you ask me. Uh, he has written some hundreds of songs. His songs, even we are singing. You know, even today we are singing those songs. We sang also today. <laughs> he, This man, he failed. <coughs> Like he was given into, uh, to alcohol, he suffered for a while. Then what happened? The churches judged him so much, he totally had to leave the ministry. He did; they did not accept him. But I can tell for sure, through his ministry, some thousands and thousands of youth have come to church. But just because he failed, he he would have required the help that Jesus offered to Peter, which is lifting him up. And Christianity lost a great leader, a great worship leader, he, uh, who brought a trend in Christian music. And lots of youth are following. Even today, after 25 years, we are singing his songs. So we should not be judgmental, but we should be like Jesus. The leader who is standing here, maybe I'm standing here at the pulpit, that does not mean we are perfect. We all. Oh, we all are weak. We have our own moments, our weaknesses, and we all are standing at the foot of Jesus, and we need to extend that grace towards each other. And sometimes we don't like to extend that grace to our fellow brethren. Chhod do leaders ko chhod do. Kam se kam, hamara fellow brothers ko bhi hum wo dikhata nahi hai. We don't show that. If somebody said lies, somebody misspelled, somebody did something knowingly, unknowingly, or intentionally, unintentionally, we judge them forever and we don't want to continue our relationship with them. My brethren, we all are fallen. We are standing at the foot of Jesus Christ. We all need somebody to raise us up. I'll, uh, I'll conclude soon. This is my last, second last point. <coughs> Here, in the, the passage we have read, Jesus comes to Peter. And Jesus is the one who gave the name Peter to Peter. His name was Simon. He said, Simon bar Jonah, in other words, Simon son of Jonah, even if you go to modern language, the, the, that is where we got the name uh, Johnson. Simon, son of John. Johnson, the name came from the Simon, son of Jonah. Johnson, uh, you are Peter. 
flesh and blood did not reveal it to you you are my, my but my father who is in heaven and i'm changing your name to be peter and on this rock i'm going to build my church jesus is the one who gave the name to peter and then in matthew so john 21 interestingly you if you read that place place where it is written uh verse 17 uh, sorry not 17 uh verse 15 so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah. Isn't it interesting? He gave the name Peter, but again he's going back and calling him with the old name. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. And what did he say previously in Matthew 22? I love you more than all these. All these people may leave you, but I will not leave you. He was comparing himself with others and said, I am the strongest, greatest follower of Jesus. Sometimes it happens to us also. <laughs> uh, I follow Jesus better than the others. But that's what Peter thought previously. And here he said, yes, Lord, I love you. The moment Jesus has taken the name Simon, son of Jonah, Peter might have thought in his heart, oh, yeah, three times I failed. I utterly... Uh, failed and denied Jesus, so he might have taken away my leadership role. I am not going to lead the crowd. He might have thought that, but what did Jesus say? Tend my sheep. He said, Simon, son of Jonah, the moment he said, all the sentiments might have played in, in Peter's mind. But Jesus is saying, all these sentiments, sentiments let me be play in your mind. I'm not going to look unto them. You are going to feed my lamb. You are going to feed my sheep. Again he said, Simon son of Jonah, do you, do you love me? Peter said, yes Lord, I love you. Tend my sheep. Again he said, Simon son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter, Peter found it difficult and uh, he said, yes Lord, I love you. You know it. You know me thoroughly. He's not saying, you don't know Jesus, you don't know me, you don't know about my commitment. Once I have decided, I will never turn back. No, now he said, Lord, you know me. Even if I speak about my commitment that I love you, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to keep it or not. You know me in and out, Lord, but I love you. In other words, what Peter is saying is, Lord, I want to love you, but I'm not sure if I can accomplish it by myself. And Jesus said, you feed my sheep. That's what Jesus said. Three times we asked. I wonder why Peter, why Jesus had to ask him three times. Probably, Peter said that he will do three things. I will not leave you. I will go for you even to prison. And I will go even to death. He said three things he will do. And three things he failed to do. And three times he denied so to compensate everything, he brought three times restoration to Peter. And if this incident did not happen, other disciples may not be able to accept Peter as leader. Peter, so here, Jesus restored Peter's position and his calling and his ministry. And, uh, and one, one last comment I would like to make and then conclude. And verse 18 onwards it is written, Most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you were gird yourself and walked, uh, walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. He spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me this is something difficult for us to uh, follow but but basically jesus said was uh, it is not about your will it is not about your will and days are coming where you will be helpless where are you depend on others people take you wherever they want but this word has to be understood in the context of the answer jesus uh, peter gave to jesus jesus asked do you love me Jesus, uh, Peter said, yes, I love you, out of his commitment. Jesus asked, do you love me? Peter said, yes, I love you. And Jesus said, tend his 
she, one simple inference here is, how can we love Jesus? The simple inference is by tending the sheep of Jesus. In other words, by, taking, by loving the sheep of Jesus. We can follow Jesus. How do we love Jesus? By loving the sheep of Jesus. That's a simple inference we need to make. And second thing is, do we love him till the death? That is what it is talking about, second part. Do you love Jesus till the death? It may be a very huge question, but I would like to bring one small example. It happened to a priest. Uh, you know, there are some priests who have some weird music ch music tests, uh, like I also have. I like heavy metal music, and uh, I like hip hop. You know, we cannot play those music in the church. I know. <laughs> I like heavy metal. The moment we play, people will go mad. Uh, we like. So there was a priest who likes heavy metal music. He attended a Christian concert. Uh, yeah, one of the musicians played greatly, and he was fully tattooed with Christian Bible scriptures and Bible quotes or some kind of Christian tattoos he got. And the priest asked him, Oh, sir, you played well. You led the worship wonderfully. Which church do you go to? And this man said, Oh, no, I don't go to any church. All these churches are boring. Their worship services are boring. There is no great worship in that church. There is no great Sunday school in the church. There is no AC in the church. Okay? Like, no, um, that man said, there is, The church is boring. I'm adding the other words. So there is no AC in the church. Oh, the people there are not educated. That's Telugu. We are looking for English. You know, we don't want to go to this church. Uh, we don't want to go to that church. So nowadays we see a lot of youth, they have choice of churches. You know, they don't look for a church where they can find some spiritual food, spiritual enrichment, but uh, they look for churches where there is a uh, trend. Your fashion should be there. That church is not a cool church. Have you heard about this? People like talk about cool churches. Even in Hyderabad, people talk about it. So the church is not cool. That's why I don't go. Then the priest asked him, do you love him? He said, he said yes, I love Jesus so much. Look at my tattoos. I, I have committed my entire life to work for the ministry of Jesus. That's why I'm going here and there and playing music and leading the worship. Then he asked, do you truly love him? He said, yes, I truly love him. And can't you just bear the boring for an hour for the Lord? In your great love? Can you not bear the, just an hour of boring service? Can you not bear just sitting in a hot room for an hour for the great love you have for the Lord? Can you not just... <coughs> Adjust with your brethren here, or talk, or you know, forgive, or resolve your issue with the brethren who is sitting next to you for the great love you have for Jesus. You're talking about love and saying, I'm ready to die for Jesus. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. These are the words we speak. Can't we not do small things to say that we do these small things out of the great love we have for the Lord. That's what the priest asked the musician. And the second, second thing was from next week, or the next week onwards, the musician was attending a liturgical church, which was near to his house regularly. You know, what are we doing? Do we love Jesus? If we love Jesus, can we show that same love with little bit? forbearance, uh, patience, humility, and uh, even if it's boring, it's okay. If, even if the sermon goes five minutes long, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> huh? Out of the great love we have for Jesus, can we do that? Peter, that's what Jesus said to Peter. Now, you may go wherever you want to, but a time is going to come where people will take you. And one thing you focus, that is to follow me. When you follow Jesus, you don't mind where you are going. And when G G Peter did the same thing, he became God confident. And he received the Holy Spirit. And he accomplished the three things. He followed the Lord. 
he went to prison for the lord and he died for the lord three things he accomplished and he was taken everywhere not out of his own wish by force by people and till the, even then jesus uh, peter what did he do i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back he accomplished it in fact for the matter of fact the song should be sung like that like this he has decided to take me no turning back no turning back and or uh, the song we sing no jesus loves me this i know for the bible tells me so it is like jesus loves me this i uh, sorry uh, jesus loves me this i know uh, jesus knows me this i love somebody said we have complete trust in the lord to follow the lord we cannot follow him by ourselves we can only do that by the help of the lord by the help of the wine dresser may god bless you